Hi, my name's Jeff, and I'm going to show you how to quickly build a design reference mission in Systems Toolkit, or SDK, from scratch. And along the way, I'm going to highlight three key themes that make SDK so powerful, which are speed, accuracy, and dynamic geometry. So let's go ahead and get started here. We've got a blank SDK scenario loaded uh, with the integrated 2D graphics, 3D graphics, and timeline view that allow me to really explore the mission simulations I'm building. We'll begin by inserting different systems, whether they're land, sea, air, or space, or payloads. Uh, we'll start off with a satellite object, and we'll use the orbit wizard to design a new satellite system. And this gives you a wide variety of options you can choose from for different orbit types. We'll use the orbit designer, which allows you to just manually adjust the orbital parameters and see what your orbit ground track looks like right there. Uh, you can also enter specific values if you'd like and uh, see the result. And just like that, we have our satellite modeled inside of our scenario. We can customize its properties to realistically mimic and model that actual satellite system. And within SDK, you have the ability to dial the fidelity to whatever is needed for wherever you are within your program lifecycle. So we have simple two-body propagators that assume Earth's a point mass, all the way to high fidelity orbit propagation that actually has different force models that can be customized as well. So really, you can get the accuracy you need uh, for your specific use case. And there's a lot of different properties that allow you to really fine tune your specific system for your specific needs. So now that we've got our satellite, we can go ahead and insert a payload on this satellite. And there's lots of different objects here that you can choose from, whether it's communications, radar. In this case, we'll use a sensor, which allows us to define a, a geometric field of view. And there's also additional options here to, if you wanted to look at like the radiometric performance of the sensor, you could go into that level of detail as well. And this example, we'll just use a generic uh, geometric cone half angle of, of 55 degrees. And as you can see in the 3D window, when I change the properties, I can immediately see that updated geometry in my 3D graphics window. You can also go a little bit further if you want to look at the resolution of this sensor. There's options for focal length and detector pitch, and this will calculate your ground sample distance. All of the parameters inside of STK are data-driven. They can be exposed through the programming interface to automate for trade studies and for additional automation and for operations as needed. But you can also enter those parameters specifically in the user interface. And you can also explore those parameters here in the help documentation, uh, which is very helpful for uh, discovering what those parameters mean and how they're calculating those outputs in SDK. So that is how we have modeled our satellite and our sensor just very quickly there. And so now what I want to do is talk about satellites that you could insert from the existing database of satellites on orbit. And so in this case, you can look up any satellite, and you can look at it by name or by spacecraft ID. In this case, we're going to insert the International Space Station. And that is going to take the two-line element set, and it's going to take the current position at the current time of that satellite, and it's going to propagate it for your scenario interval. And so here I can see I now have the International Space Station. I can zoom into the space station. I can see the model, and I can begin the animation so that I can see how this space station changes its orbit over time. And you'll notice that in addition to the 3D model, it's also moving itself. The solar arrays, for example, are changing as a function of time. And if you rotate your display in the 3D graphics window here, you can actually see that the solar panels are tracking the sun. So this is part of that dynamic geometry that allows you to take very complex orbit mechanics, articulations of uh, different solar panels, the sun's position relative to the Earth that's spinning, and it makes it very easy and seamless to model and analyze and understand what's going on. And it's not just for visualization. The analysis here is really the important part. And SDK is used to a high level of accuracy. It's been validated. And this uh, is used, actually, in operations uh, for the space station for the power collection, which, as you can imagine, is a pretty complex calculation when you include all of the other parts of the 
space station that are interfering with those solar panels. So, so now we've got our satellites in our scenario. Our design reference mission calls for imaging of Boulder, Colorado. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert Boulder, Colorado as a place in our scenario. Uh, we can simply just search it uh, in here. And we'll insert Boulder, Colorado. And when we do that, we can now zoom to Boulder from our 3D graphics window. And as we zoom into this location, it's going to stream in imagery of that area as well as the terrain of that. So here we can see we've got Boulder, Colorado. We see the foothills and the mountains in the background. And now we can start evaluating the relationship of this location to our satellites. And so this is really where that di dynamic geometry comes in to play as well as the accuracy and speed with how quickly I've been able to model all of this. So to evaluate the relationship between these two uh, satellites, I can just select them here in the uh, access tool and click compute. And when I do this, you'll notice that I now have the satellite access or satellite overflight times displayed here on my 2D graphics window. I can create reports and graphs that will tell me how often I can see this particular location and the total duration of that uh, collection time. So that is a, a quick illustration of STK's capabilities, but that is just one domain. So another thing that you might want to do is maybe that imaging time is not quite what you had hoped for. So what you can do is you can start modeling other domains. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in an aircraft, and we're going to have that aircraft also fly over Boulder, Colorado, and we will then incorporate that into our design reference mission. So here what we're going to do is we're just going to click out a simple route for our aircraft. And we're going to have this aircraft flying overhead. And you can click out the route. You can change the altitude. Uh, there's a whole catalog of aircraft objects you can choose from. Uh, in this case, we'll just have a, a generic aircraft flying over. And similarly to the previous calculation is we can calculate the relationship between Boulder and this new aircraft. So when I can compute that, you see this new line is joining the two, and I can now create a report of that interval as well. And so when you zoom out, you kind of see the full picture of this quick design reference mission that is a, a pretty simple example of imaging a location on the ground, but you can quickly expand this to look at regions, look at constellations of satellites. If you want to do a constellation of satellites, it's as easy as right-clicking on your satellite, loading up the walker tool, specifying the number of satellites per plane and the number of planes, and now you've got your constellation of satellites, which you can perform the same analysis to. So just like that, you're able to quickly build a design reference mission that allows you to understand the complex dynamic geometry of the scenario, but it's very quick to build these, and it's very high level of accuracy that you can use to build these missions. So that's all I had for this uh, particular example. Uh, if you'd like more information or if you have any questions on this, please email us at support at AGI.com or check out our other YouTube videos. Thank you.